Hi, my name is Maria Mateo, and in my presentation, we will be discussing Yasuhiro Ozu, one of the most influential directors to Japanese cinema. Some background information on Ozu is that he was born on December 12, 1903 in Tokyo, Japan. He never married. He worked as an assistant cameraman for the film studio Sochiiku, which was the first time he was introduced to the filmmaking world. He started directing in 1927 on his own, and his first script was A Sword of Penitence, which is now non-existent due to the fact that the script and the negatives were destroyed. And he was mostly influenced by American films, especially Westerns, although he never incorporated the characteristics that they include into his own films. Ozu's film style mainly focused on portraying the daily lives and basic human nature of people in the Japanese culture. Some of his styles included making films about calm, everyday lives of married couples, which I find kind of ironic since he was never married, and yet he makes a lot of films that portray daily married couple lives. Another style includes the dissolution of the family and generational conflict, and last but not least, uneventful films. Most of his films had no major events, since they just focused on families and their ordinary lives. Ozu's directing styles include low camera angles, which are usually shot shots that are filmed from the waist up. In these angles, the camera is placed about two feet off the ground, and they are meant to allow the viewer to feel like they're in the room with the characters. In many films, the characters sit on tatami mats, which is what they used to sit on the floor, which influenced the name the tatami shot, which is what they are called. Next is the pillow shots, which are images of unrelated things that are occurring in the film, which drive the viewer away from what's about to happen next. Another signature in Ozu's films is the usage of 50mm lenses, which are the best to mimic the eye, the human eye. Next is the far camera placement. In many of his films, the camera is placed in corners in order to show diagonal, long diagonals, which give the illusion of depth in the room. Next is subject placement, which is I'm going to further discuss in the next slide. Many of Ozu's films demonstrate his obsessiveness with obsessiveness with composition in his films. He uses subject placement to give structure and he does this by using framing, which is placing people in the center of the frame in order to give the film its structure and composition. He does this by using spatial divides like straight lines, furniture, and people. In many films, people are placed in between windows or doors or bars that give the, the film a, a look of order and organization. He also does this by hardly moving his camera, which keeps the films aligned. Some of Ozu's films that demonstrate all the characteristics that we talked about in my presentation include I Was Born But, Equinox Flower, and Tokyo Story. I Was Born But is about two sons that learn to understand the pressure that her, their father puts on them. Equinox Flower is about a father and a daughter that get into a disagreement because the daughter chooses her own spouse rather than letting her father choose who she will marry, like tradition. This leads to a family separation and the father deciding refusing not to attend the wedding because of pride. This shows how simple disagreements could separate a family. Much of this happens in ordinary lives, which is what Ozu is meant to portray. Last is Tokyo Story, the film that we've watched in this classroom, which is about the Hirayamas who visit their grown-up grown children but they neglect them when they when they see them, they don't make enough time for them, 
which shows generational conflict. In addition, the grandkids don't pay attention to them or appear to be not interested in their grandparents because they don't know them, which that also demonstrates the, the difference in generations.